Morning everyone, there'll be one or two uh, croaky voices in the room this morning I suppose. Um, this is Rochdale, you are Rochdale. Um, this is the point to which we said we'd always give you a bit of an update from a, a council perspective about some of the things going on in the town. Um, I suspect this slot will diminish as these meetings go on and it's picked up more as part of the mainstream. But I thought I'd focus first of all on um, the town centre because there is a lot of activity going on in the town centre and it's important, I think, that we keep making sure that you're aware of that as Rochdale businesses. Um, Rochdale Riverside, leisure and uh, retail development. Yeah, I did say retail development. There aren't many of those going on at the moment. Um, is still on track to open. It's, it's, it's on site. It's on, on track. It's not lost any time whatsoever. It's mainly up now, so most of the work going forward will be on internal. So that should mean that there shouldn't be too many uh, problems in hitting the opening date of Easter um, 2020. Um, since the last time we met, there have been a couple more uh, announcements of lettings. Uh, I think we said that we were expecting a really strong uh, letting imminently last time, and that's now come to pass. That's H&M taking 22,500 square feet. That's a really good um, part of the retail offer. And I think equally as important mm -hmm. with high streets these days is the leisure offer. We've mm -hmm. already got the cinema, as people will probably recall. Uh, we've now got Put Stars, which I don't really get, I have to say, but it's, it's, in, it's golf inside, as if that makes sense to anyone. But apparently it's really popular and everyone wants to do it. Um, so that's, an, again, a, a 20,000 square foot letting. That's quite important, I think, because it's important that we get the balance right in, in our high street between uh, retail, leisure, and indeed residential going forward. Um, Rochdale Town Hall, we've mentioned that before. That's a, a, an exciting project. It's going to be an investment of circa £20 million. Um, the the programme is not really due to start for a, a, another year, which is good, because we ideally don't want that to clash with what, what um, Paul's just said about Dippy and about the opening of the new retail centre. So it's the year after that that it will close to have all the works done on it internally. And that will be followed by uh, an investment in um, the public realm surrounding it. And, and the most important thing about that is we, we're trying to shift the car parking from that front so you get a proper view of what is uh, a real jewel in, in <coughs> Rochdale's crown. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about uh, Dippy as well. Oh, I've missed Uprising. I was going to talk a little bit about Dippy, but I'm going to skip that. So I will say a little bit more about um, uh, Rochdale Uprising. That's not a ref another reference to last night. It felt a bit like that when you were there, I know. But it's, it's not that Uprising. Um, this is a project that was um, to deliver 12 murals uh, around town on key buildings, like the Pioneers Museum, uh, the old the, the Marks and Spencer uh, built, not the new Marks and Spencer building, the old Marks and Spencer building. Um, and it was a festival led by uh, a Rochdale born artist, Hayley Garner, um, who is part, one half of a superstar <coughs> artist duo, actually. They're, I think they're away in Berlin at the moment doing something over there. Um, and that gained a massive amount of PR. and. Coming back to what I said about high streets and how they've got to be built in future, one of the things that's got to be part of that rebuilding program is very much about heritage and culture. And so that really strikes at the heart of that and we will be doing more around that. Uh, it got some really great coverage um, on BBC Northwest uh, tonight. Again, all about positioning. Um, as I said, I'm not really going to talk, talk very much about DP, other than to say that it, it is in two parts. There's the the <coughs> Diplodocus itself that's going to be sited uh, in the Warren Riverside. But then across town, there's going to be um, a natural history-linked exhibition uh, that's going to be in touchstones as well. So it's going to be something, as usual, we're doing things differently here in Rochdale. What, I mean, Dip is a bit of a rock star um, in all the, the museums, because it is museums that have been sited in so far in his tour around the UK. Um, they've had increased football, uh, footfall, football, you see it's on my mind, <laughs> footfall of staggering numbers. So the first place it went was a tiny museum in Dorset that gets an average annual footfall of 50,000 and it got over 200,000 people in two months. 
So we're esp estimating we're going to get at least a quarter of a million visitors as a result of, ha of having that skeleton that's not even real. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say that, should I? But it's not. Um, it's carbon. It, it's, it's actually advanced manufacturing material. It's carbon fibre, isn't it? So, um, but as a result of having that, we will have an enormous amount of footfall, which which helpfully coincides exactly with with the opening of the of Rochdale Riverside. Okay, uh, we always do a bit of an investment update as well. Um, probably the the biggest recent announcement is Trade Centre UK. Uh, which is uh, the fastest growing retailer, it does cars, surprise, surprise, um, and in the financial year ending November 2018, the group's profits before tax were up 38% over the year before, so it is a very, very high performing uh, company. Turnover, we're talking 250 million plus, so we're talking about a, a, big, a big business. <coughs> They're already recruiting 100 uh, staff, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, out at Sandbrook Park, um, along with uh, a hotel offer as well. And I've got a quote actually, I'm going to read from the Trade Centre Group Chief Executive Andy Colehurst. Uh, he said, as a Rochdale lad myself, that's great, uh, I'm massively excited that we've been able to bring our unique concept to the town and I know it will, the store will be a huge success. So we're looking forward to that, that's progressing. Um, <coughs> Paul mentioned uh, Kingsway, uh, there's a Daxia, big logistics company that's already based, a German logistics company I should add, that's already based in, in Rochdale. Uh, we've been working with them for some considerable time about their expansion and I have to say it was knocked back a bit by Brexit but they've managed to work their way through that and they are making uh, what is a 14 and a half million pound investment in a new uh, 55,000 square foot uh, unit that will be uh, operational uh, later this month. Um, and then commercial blinds and uh, KP uh, Industries are the first two tenants in um, Logic at Kinsway, which is a new uh, directly funded council development of small units. And I think we talked about this before. The council very much recognise that there's a market for bigger units that enables them to get done commercially but the smaller units that are crucial to our economy to allow businesses to start up and grow uh, don't get developed because they're not financially viable. So we've, we've taken the, a, a punt on this. We've, we've got quite a portfolio of small business units and we intend to be doing more of that in future as well to make sure that we're doing our bit to support the local economy. Uh, there are eight units there from uh, three to 7,500 square feet, although there's also the opportunity to combine some of those units if that's uh, required. Um, lettings are going okay, but they're still available, and I think there are some brochures knocking about somewhere. Um, I'm not sure I really wanted to, to mention this, and there was a lot of um, dysfunction going on in Parliament last night when uh, we were all together. Um, but it's worth I think mentioning from the point of view of the local authority, we've been doing what we can in terms of Brexit preparations. So we've been looking at things like fuel supply, we've been looking at from a health, with health colleagues about a drug, drug supply. Um, we've been looking about uh, at workforce issues that might arise in the social care sector. So we've been doing that sort of planning. But most of what, Brex what needs to happen as a result of Brexit, whatever form that takes, is about you guys. It's about making sure that we, I think we probably all know that whatever happens, when it happens, there's going to be some sort of economic shock. The issue is whether it's a short shock job or something that's longer than that. And what you guys need to do is prepare for that as businesses. And so on your chairs, there's a leaflet um, from Greater, Greater Manchester Growth Hub, which, is, which are setting up um, events to help to support you to understand what your business, in your particular context, needs to do to respond effectively uh, to, to Brexit. Um, so that's all I've got to say. I do want to just finish with another Brexit-related football reference because I was driving in this morning and there was a big debate about how the language being used in Parliament last night was divisive and driving the country apart. And it started me thinking about how football is the best example, we have our issues, but is our best, the best example of how people are brought together. You don't have to go far, far down the road to find places where people in the same household support different teams passionately and they live together. They're married, they're brother and sister. 
Now, that's what our community is about. It's not about what's going on in Parliament, and I think that's something that we all need to, to hold on to. So thank you.